This is Matthew of Another World Terraria, where I teach and inspire you on the topics of rare plants and artistic nature displays. In this build log, my most epic video series to date, I'll teach you exactly how I made the Crown Forest Terrarium. In addition to gaining a greater understanding of how my builds come together, you'll learn new techniques, tips and tricks, and get insights into my thought processes. In this video, part one, I'll go over the concept and prototyping phase, and then we'll begin construction of the wood stump. Although every build I do is unique and each has special considerations, in general they all go through the following basic steps. First, having a general vision or concept for the piece. Second, working out the primary hardscape design. Third, building foundations and frameworks in conjunction with constructing the final hardscape. Fourth, adding substrates and complementary details. Fifth, planting the piece. And sixth, tweaking and adjusting the design and plants over time as it grows in. In this video series, I'm going to walk you through all of those steps for the Crown Forest Terrarium. As noted, phase one is always the concept. The Crown Forest started as the idea of a dramatic tree stump with a lot of branches sticking out. After visualizing potential designs in my mind, I thought about some of the aquascapes that I've seen where they often have smaller pieces of rock or wood that jut off to the side in a staggering fashion. I drew some inspiration from those concepts for this piece. Here's a piece of wood which I already had in mind to serve as the stump base. I took a look through my hardscape rack to find some other pieces of wood that I could attach together to make the stump more dramatic and interesting. This is the initial rough prototype of the stump. You might be wondering how I chose these particular pieces of wood. I'll quickly share some basic tips for prototyping and choosing the right wood when you want to combine multiple pieces into a hardscape centerpiece. Whenever I'm going to combine multiple pieces of wood or rock together into one for a design, I play around with a bunch of different pieces until I start to find a composition that I like, at least as a starting point. Here are a few things to think about when you're choosing the pieces of wood. Use pieces which have close to the same color and texture so they combine seamlessly. Keep the pieces angled in a way that flows visually and avoid perpendicular lines or unnatural angles. And be mindful of the relative scale of the pieces. Generally use thicker material near the base of a stump or branch and thinner material as it gets further away from the base. Now let's get back to the crown forest. These are the three pieces of wood that I found while making the prototype that you saw earlier. In a future part of the video series, we'll find the smaller pieces of wood that are lower down on the right side of the tank. After I get a rough hardscape starting point, the next step is usually to play around with the wood or rocks inside of whatever container or tank I'm considering using for the build. In this case, I used an Aquatop 12 gallon rimless tank with high clarity glass. I bought this tank because it was on sale and then it sat around for almost three years before I found a use for it. As mentioned, I play around with the hardscape in the tank and I use whatever I have at my disposal to roughly hold the pieces of wood in place as I prototype various layouts. Two things to note are, number one, it doesn't have to be pretty, it just needs to let you visualize the layout, and number two, be very careful not to scratch or crack the glass of your container. Here's what I'm thinking about at this point in the process. First of all, will the hardscape even fit in the tank, and how much space is there around the wood or rocks? Then if it does fit, is the hardscape the proper scale in relation to the size of the tank? That is, does it seem too big, too small, or just right? Then I ask myself if I can achieve the concept I'm going for with this specific tank and hardscape combination, taking into account things like where would the plumbing go if I wanted a water feature, how would plants fit in, and so on. And then lastly, I use my gut instincts and ask myself, does this feel right or not? After deciding that I was onto something with this wood and tank, it was time to flesh out the concept and design a bit more before diving into the construction. I roughly set up the prototype again by leaning wood on a rock and against some cardboard boxes, and then I took a photo of it with my phone, which I could then take into Photoshop. Here's the image in Photoshop after I roughly cut it out of the background. And here's the cutout printed on paper so that I can do a little sketching. This is when things really start to get fun. Here's a very rough sketch that I did to visualize a possible design for the hardscape. As I said before, none of this stuff has to be pretty. The entire process is mainly about clarifying things in your mind and making sure that you feel good about the direction of the project. At this point, I decided it was time to start constructing the wood stump. 
In this clip, I'm test fitting one of the branches against the main stump to refresh my memory as to how I wanted it to attach. Next, I stick a rock under the stump so it stands up at a better angle for gluing the branch on. And now I'm about to reveal one of my secret techniques, which is using a custom clamping contraption to hold the wood in place. After this video clip, I'll show you a couple of photos and talk about this device a bit more. By the way, there are some Amazon links in the description for some of the products used in this video in case you want to get any of those things for your own project. Here's the wood clamped in position and ready for gluing. The clamp device is a custom contraption that I made back when I did a lot of macro photography. The device consists of a small tripod, an Arca plate, a couple of articulating magic arms and small ball heads, and a couple of small clamps. This device is super useful not only because of the clamps, but because it has multiple arms and can be adjusted to pretty much any position. As opposed to being clamped onto the wood, this clamp is just being used as a support. In this clip, I'm going to use some epoxy, which is one of my favorite adhesives, to attach the first branch to the stump. This is 60 second epoxy, which is pretty tricky to use, not only because of how short the working time is, but also because it tends to be a lot thinner than the slower epoxies, which make it drip and run more. But it's definitely good when you want a fast connection. Here's a close up of the wood and epoxy attachment point. Even though it was 60 second epoxy, I waited 24 hours to ensure a complete cure and a strong connection. A few things to note about this wood connection is that there are large gaps where the wood wasn't touching and that the branch is quite large and protrudes far away from the main stump, which puts more tension on the attachment point. And finally, when the wood gets wet, it tends to swell up, which can weaken these kind of connections. For those three reasons, I decided to go the extra mile and use some epoxy putty to make sure the connection was ultra strong and solid. Here I'm mixing up some putty epoxy and then filling in larger gaps and building up the stump structure to span both pieces of wood. Note that you can add extra security if you wrap the putty around corners and protruding elements, so essentially it creates a hook that holds the pieces together instead of just relying on the surface adhesion. This is a close-up shot showing the gel and putty epoxy connections on the inside, and here's one showing the back of the piece. Now I'm going to attach the next branch. As before, I'm doing a quick test fit, and then I use the clamp device again to position the wood. Now I'm sliding the main stump over, adding the epoxy to the branch base, and then connecting the two pieces back together. Then I'm working a bit more epoxy into the gaps and trying to make sure that there's a good connection between the pieces of wood. After 24 hours, the epoxy has reached the strongest bond, and we can unclamp everything and check out our handiwork. It's time now to cover up the epoxy and blend the pieces of wood together visually so it looks a bit more natural. For that, I'm going to use peat moss and some glue. It's important to let the peat moss dry out completely for at least several days because any moisture contained in it will reduce how well it sticks to the glue. As always, when working with chemicals, I use safety gear such as gloves, goggles, and a dust mask. Since the Gorilla Glue clear grip that I will be using has dangerous fumes, I'm going to wear a respirator which is designed for that application. After applying an appropriate amount of clear grip glue based on the area I need to cover, I use a brush to spread it around and ensure good contact everywhere. Then I apply the dry peat moss to the glue and press it firmly on. I like to use a blower brush immediately to remove any loose peat moss so that I can make sure that I got coverage everywhere I need it. If not, it'll be clearly visible and then I can add more glue or peat moss if needed. Then I continue with the rest of the areas that I need to cover up. About a day or two later, the glue is fully cured and the peat moss is securely attached. Note that everything doesn't have to look 100% natural and perfect. All that matters is that the epoxy and the other things that we don't want visible are less conspicuous. Over time, plants and moss will grow in to complete the job for us. If you feel this video was helpful or otherwise worthy, I humbly request that you help spread the word online about what I'm doing, because the more subscribers I get, the more people that I can teach and inspire. Thank you so much, and I'll see you soon in part two of the Crown Forest Build Log.